This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm again here. Uh, I'm Dr. Ramashri, and uh, I'm here with this uh, kind of instruments video now. Uh, this would be important kind of instruments that we need to know. Uh, as I have earlier said, we have a separate laparoscopic uh, video, laparoscopic hysteroscope, cystoscope video. I think you can uh, just go on to the web, just have a look at uh, on those videos too, to know more about the laparoscope, uh, hysteroscope, and the cystoscope instruments. Okay, so let me um, uh, start off with a few important things which we need to know. I do not have these two instruments with me. Uh, this is a tinaculum. The tinaculum is a one. This is basically to, uh, it's a traumatizing instrument. Okay, so they are traumatic instruments. And as I have previously said in my uh, last uh, videos, how do you describe an instrument? An instrument needs to be described on the, regarding the handle. Okay, so it has got a ring handle with a ratchet and the shaft. Okay, and the shaft. And it has got a box, sorry, box lock. And both the jaws end in a, the tip of the jaws end in a sharp right angle today. And this has a single tooth, okay? The tip of the jaw ends with a tooth and they approximate uh, on um, uh, each other at the tip, okay? They do not interdigitate, they approximate at the tip, thereby it gives a clear hold on the cervix. Basically, this instrument is used to hold the cervix, okay? As, uh, whereas a valsalum is again used to hold the cervix. Basically, a valsalum can be of two types. Either it can be a double-toothed valsalum or it can be a normal multiple tooth. Valsalum. This is what we normally use. In a double-toothed valsalum, it is like that of a Fenton's bulldog valsalum or the lion's pussel. So the tooth would be similar to that of a lion, okay? One, both of them, it's as basically it's got a ring handle with a ratchet lock and a shaft with a box lock, and both the blades ending up with a uh, U shaped sharp tooth, okay, on uh, by uh, two tooths, okay, on either sides, so that they interdigitate and hold the cervix well. Whereas in case of a multiple tooth, you can see that they interdigitate with each other, okay, thereby holding the cervix in a way, okay? So this uh, single uh, edge is the tinaculum, whereas this with either a two tooth or a multiple tooth is a valsalum. So the indication of this is that it's used to hold, grasp and hold the anterior lip of the cervix during vaginal operations. For example, a, a dilatation and curatage or a repair of a prolapsed uh, <coughs> Cervix, okay, during a, a relapse, prolapse surgery, and to help in the correction of the um, RVF, that is a rectovaginal fistula, to grasp the prolapsed submucous myoma, okay, during a vaginal myomectomy or even during hysterectomy, it can be used to hold. Okay, the complication is that it is traumatizing, and so they may cause a laceration of the cervix. They may cause uh, infection and bleeding at the point where we have applied the valsalum or the tinaculum. Okay, so this is regarding the instrument and coming to the retractors that is used. Okay, basically there are two types of retract that are two retractors which are commonly used in uh, gynecological procedure is the ball first self-retaining retractor. So if you can see this, normally there is a central frame. Okay, there is a central frame. And you have this two blades, okay? These are the side blades. And here, if you see, okay, this, they have the side blades, okay? This side blades size can be changed depending upon the depth that we use. And also, see, if you can see, there are a, one more size here. So taking out this, we can put this here. And here there is a central blade to retract the um, bladder. Okay, so let me show you the ball first retractor, how it is being applied. So. So 
this is a ball first retractor if you see this is a central uh, yeah this is a central uh, frame and this has at one end has got a fixed blade and the other side you can actually move this okay, depending upon the width that is necessary so what we normally do is this this has to be on the this end has to be on the cranial side and this is on the caudal side so uh, if the incision is vertical like this okay cranial caudal so what we do is we put inside the um, wound and then once you are inside what happens is we try to open up the blades so that you would have the space in between so it is put like this so introduced like this and once you are inside the wound you would try to open up to have the space for operating okay so once you open up what you do is you would want to fix it up okay so once this can be an interchangeable uh, once and here this lock if you see there is one more lock here one more uh, thing and this is to hold the central plate so what we normally do is we put it inside and retract this is to retract the bladder okay so this would retract the bladder once it is inside we will have to fix it up okay once this would hold the uh, bladder and so um, this is self explanatory so once you put it inside you don't need uh, people to hold the retractor so this is a self advantage is that this is a self retaining uh, retractor where when you are uh actually this is to this is on the lateral side okay this is on the lateral side of the abdomen so one important uh, thing that we will have to look at is when we are putting it like this and then moving the moving it uh, on the sides we will have to pack uh, adequately to prevent injury to the bowel or the internal organ so this is one of the one one more important thing which we will have to remember while um, So while performing the surgery using a ball first is that we have to properly uh, uh, you know protect the bowel or the internal structures by adequately padding the um, structures okay so a self retaining abdominal retractor this is the ball first retractor used to clearly expose the surgical site during the surgery so Uh, i have actually given the link below to find uh, to know how exactly it is put inside i have just given the link below if you would want to please go ahead and see the video on that okay that's a very beautiful video and the, this is another retractor this is a handheld retractor usually this is a curved it has a curved retracting blade okay with this which has a flat handle okay this is a flat handle the handle is slightly curved so at one end okay this is what they are they are seeing to have a uh, gripping uh, on the retractor and so that it doesn't slip it is a handheld retractor usually held by the assistant to have a good view okay and uh, the use is that it actually uh, keeps the um, operating field okay clear so uh, it is used to retract the adjacent organs so that we would be able to um, look at the field in a better way and the depth would uh, of the field would help us to use the proper we have to use a proper size to adequately retract the um, organs okay so let me show you the reverse retractor so this is a divers retractor as you say this is all a flat uh, retractor it is got one end has been uh, curved and the other this is a flat handle if you see it's a flat handle on the other end is slightly uh, curved just to have a grip on it so 
you would actually retract the um, uh, organs uh, to have a desired um, look at the feet. Okay, this is called, this comes in different sizes and what I have is a smaller one and um, this is a diverse retract. So coming to the uh, different clumps, okay, this is something which we need to know. See, I do not have all the clumps here. I've got only two types of uh, clumps which we commonly use in uh, hysterectomy here and hospital. But the things that you need to know are a few of these clumps. So uh, these are the hysterectomy clumps which are commonly used. Um, and this has been mentioned in uh, UK-based books. The Heaney's clamp are, as you have, if you have to um, describe an instrument, you will have to say that it's got a ring handle with a ratchet and the shaft with a box lock and the two jaws. Okay. If you see on, on the inside of the jaw, this has got a serrations, okay, oblique serrations and also a horizontal tooth. It is not at the tip, but it is slightly below the tip, okay? One side is a groove and the other side is a ridge. It can be a single um, tooth or it can be two tooths, two teeth, sorry, two teeth. One at both placed at a, uh, with a, with a space between so that this is basically the serrations Oblique serrations are to prevent slipping and also the horizontal serrations. When there are two serrations in different directions, the hold of the uh, tissue would be better. And this has uh, got a good hold. So this is a key clamp where it has got a, a oblique serrations. So the diagonal or the oblique serrations and it is full, it is throughout the uh, blades or the jaws okay and uh, the advantage is that both the serrations and the tooth helps preventing uh, from slipping okay to secure the ligaments the other one is combining a heaney with a valentine valentine if we don't have this okay this tooth then you call it as a valentine tooth. The, advanced, the the important thing that we have to remember on a palatine clamp is it has got grooves, okay, vertical grooves running almost the full length of the uh, jaw with a tooth, okay. If you can see, there is a tooth built just slightly below the tip and one is a ridge, and the, this is a ridge and this is the groove. So, this again prevents the clamp from slipping. Okay, so combining uh, uh, vertical uh, grooves along with the uh, uh, teeth, okay. along with the tooth, uh, below the tip is a heaney valentine. So, what the other uh, clamps that can be used? They are all atraumatic clamps. Okay, here if you see, uh, it has not got any um, uh, big tooth. So. If you see, there are two vertical grooves running throughout the length of the jaw and at the tip, you've got a horizontal striation. So this can be in a straight form, it can be a curved or a very curved uh, clamp or a right angle clamp, okay? It depends upon where we are actually using it. Normally, this is a sturdy atraumatic longitudinal groove. Usually, again here, if you see, there is a vertical groove as well as a horizontal striations. Okay. This is um, a less traumatic when compared to that of a, a big teeth. Okay. So um, Zeppelin is the one which we commonly use and it has been uh, mentioned in the UK um, surgeries also. So Heaney, Heaney Valentine or a Zeppelin are used to hold the uh, are the clamps that are used during the hysterectomies. Coming to uh, a clamp called the Williams clamp. Yeah. Williams clamp. Here, if you see again, this has got a ring handle with a ratchet and a shaft with a box lock and the, the blades can be either straight or curved. 
but the only thing is it has got a tip which has got one of the two is a one of the uh, tip has a, a ridge and the other one has a interdigitating groove okay so this vertical uh, grooves along with a tip okay tip having a tooth prevents slippage okay so this are basically used for holding the tougher uh, that is the ligaments okay so this is one of the uh, hysterectomy clamps that we uh, that is being used so i think this let me show you there is one more clamp uh, called a kelly's clamp okay which are normally uh, let me show you the clamps okay okay so this is a kelly's clamp Kelly's clamp is slightly different from the uh, other hemostatic forceps in that it is not it does not completely uh, cover the jaws. The full length is not there. It is only till a uh, three fourths of the jaws are covered with horizontal striations. See the horizontal striations. If you see they if you see there are only horizontal striations. Okay. They don't at the tip. They don't have anything. So the chance of slipping with the Kelly's clamp is more. So normally we do not use a Kelly's clamp for uh, the hysterectomies for holding the ligaments. And the, the common um, uh, one which we use is a sturdy atraumatic zeppelin. Okay. If you see here, there are. vertical as well as the horizontal striations okay so this is a clamp that we uh, are using for hysterectomy and this finishes the gynec instruments i hope you all enjoyed this uh, video um uh, let us get, you know see you again if we have any interesting videos to be made we would get back to you okay happy learning all Thank you.